So I got a new muzzle device in front of me today. I wanted to show you guys it here in front of the bench so I get enough light before I get it out and do a little bit of shooting. Um, this is the Weapon Tech Stars uh, muzzle device and it is a flash hider with basically um, some level of recoil reduction capability. And I wanted to show you here. So it comes with just the muzzle device and a crush washer. It's pretty much everything you need. Um, the muzzle device is like I said, it's, it's designed to be a flash hider. Uh, my understanding is that Weapon Tech built this uh, with the idea that they wanted to reduce as much flash as possible and concussion at the shooter, while at the same time reducing uh, recoil and um, limiting flash, uh, like a lot of the the current um, prong flash hiders do. And I actually have uh, move the camera here a uh, a uh, Smith Vortex in front of me here, and it's it's actually on my 16 inch BCM upper, and I'm going to be using a. Uh, replacing the Smith Vortex with the Weapon Tech for a little bit of uh, uh, testing and use. And I'm not sure if you can tell on the camera there, but the, the muzzle device as a whole is basically the same same length as the, the Smith Vortex. Uh, the prongs are basically the same length as well. There are a couple differences though. Um, it does have a slight uh, curve to the side, so they aren't straight. Uh, they don't curve quite as much as the Smith, the Smith Vortex. Um, they do have a little machining done out of here. My understanding is that that is done to uh, reduce a lot of the ping that you get with, with these. Yeah, just by hitting with my fingernail pings. Um, and this one does the same thing. See that there? Uh, but uh, they also have um, the bottom of the muzzle device, which you'll see it does have a, it does index a certain direction. Whereas the Smith Vortex and like the BE Myers 249F, you can just screw them right on. Uh, this does index so that your logo is basically up and the small prong is down. So notice that prong has shorter prongs. So this should help direct more of the muzzle blast up and provide at least some level of recoil, or I should say uh, muzzle rise mitigation. So um, they do have the, the pin there if you need to do any pin and welding. But anyway, you're gonna throw this on this guy, um, see how well it works and uh, just do some shooting with it this weekend. So. Like I said, it should it should be uh, it should it shouldn't ping as much as the, the open-ended devices that we have, and um, I guess I'm anxious to see uh, if there's any and how much uh, muzzle rise mitigation and the concussion and, and all that jazz. So um, let's go ahead and just get this guy installed. So I'm using the uh, Geisley Reaction Rod. I have one of these in uh, the 308 or the AR10 variety, and I uh, haven't had one in 5.56, but after I did that most recent lightweight build. Uh, or I should say before I did that most recent lightweight build, um, I really wanted to get one because I had such a great experience with uh, the um, the reaction rod of the 308. I loved how it worked uh, and everything, so I wanted to get one. Um, and honestly, after using it, I think it's, it's probably the best uh, tool that you can use for uh, installing and removing muzzle devices as well as torquing barrel nuts. Um, I don't think that there's anything out there that's quite as good. Um, and given my experience, I would say that it's the best or one of the best out there. So I love this thing. Um, when you're when you're installing and uh, removing muzzle devices, uh, if you're using a standard vice block, which is fine, I have those. Um, or if you're not clamping the end of the barrel, uh, you're putting a lot of torque on the receiver extension in there. So basically, you're twisting the barrel, uh, and then the barrel is hitting that that receiver in there. So um, that's where the force is going. Whereas if you're using the reaction rod. Um, that's going right into the receiver itself, right into the barrel, um, and you're just putting all the pressure on the barrel as opposed to the receiver. So, safest way to do it. So let's get this uh, this guy cleaned off, and then we'll install the the weapon tech. So I ended up throwing on a different crush washer. I wasn't getting it to index how I like with the correct uh, foot pound, so I threw on a little bit different one, which put me a lot closer to where I needed to be. So a lot less stress on things that don't need to be stressed. Um, I am gonna use Rockset. I use Rockset on pretty much all of my muzzle devices and fair amount of gas blocks. Uh, a lot of guys have kind of have some horror stories about Rockset where uh, they put it on and basically can't can't get it off uh, after doing the, the install, whether it be, a, again, a gas block or a muzzle device. Um, pro tip for you guys, because I've, I've had some of those experiences as well. Um, people say to soak them in water. Don't mess with that. It's uh, it, while rock set is water soluble. Um, I've I've let gas blocks sit um, overnight uh, for about 12 to 24 hours um, without um, and then without it dissolving, without it helping one bit. Um, what you want to do is take a hammer, like a brass hammer or a, an nylon hammer, and shock whatever you're hitting. Hit it really good a couple of times with some type of a, a mallet that's not going to mar your surface, and that shock will break it loose, and then you can get it removed. 
uh, without issue. So that's why we're using rock set. Uh, another note I'll make here is some guys will actually, um, some guys will actually uh, index these a little bit um, off center. Uh, so if you're a right-handed shooter, you would index it at like one o'clock from the shooter position, uh, basically not quite turning it to uh, to 12 o'clock position. If you're a left-handed shooter, you'd index it a little bit past the 12 o'clock mark. Uh, and they're doing that more or less to direct some of that muzzle blast in a certain direction so that uh, you're compensating for the shooter actually holding the rifle uh, you know, because there's, if you're holding right-handed, you got a lot of mass on the left side. That means the rifle is going to recoil up into the right. Um, I do a little bit of ambi shooting and I don't want to restrict this to like it only shooting well for some shooters. So I'm going to index it at 12 o'clock, uh, and call it a day and it's turning on pretty well. So just a little bit more and I think we'll be set. We should be good to go. Uh, I got it finally torqued down and lined up. Didn't take too long. Pretty pretty simple install. Again, I'm running it uh, right at 12 o'clock. See how she works. Um, we'll take it out this weekend. I think I'm probably also going to throw on that primary arms um, new one to eight. Got a lot of people asking about that, and I've really been wanting to see how well it does um, and how well all the the reticles and stuff line up at certain yardages. So should have it out this weekend at range is past 400 500 yards. So. Should be some fun video and some fun shooting. If you have any questions, uh, I'll put a link down below like I usually do for the stuff I'm talking about in these videos. Or check us out on Facebook and Instagram and that stuff. So comments down below. All right, later.